Secretary Mayorkas, um, there have been about 56,000 unaccompanied children that have come across the border uh, since President Biden became president. As you know, once these children are placed with sponsors in the United States, there's a requirement that there be a 30-day follow-up telephone call to determine their status. You're aware of that, aren't you? Uh, that is within the domain of uh, Health and Human Services. Uh, Senator, I am not intimately familiar with the process once the child arrives in the shelter and care of HHS. You don't know what happens to the children once they're placed with a sponsor? It is our responsibility in the Department of Homeland Security to transfer the unaccompanied child within 72 hours to the care and custody of Health and Human Services. I know that HHS, of course, is responsible to place that child with a responsible family member um, uh, or relative. Um, and I, I don't know the details of the HHS process. So once you hand them off to DHS, you wash your hands of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, uh, of that burden. Um, would it surprise you to know that just this last fiscal year, in the 38-day follow-up calls to sponsors of unaccompanied children, 18% of them did not answer the telephone, and uh, there's been no subsequent follow-up uh, on these children placed with sponsors, many of whom are not even related uh, to these children. And uh, frankly, the Biden administration doesn't know whether they're being forced into labor, being trafficked for sex, being uh, abused or neglected. Uh, would that shock you to learn that as many as 18 percent of those children, the federal government has simply lost? As a senator, that would indeed surprise me, and I would respectfully disagree uh, with your characterization of our responsibility. We don't wash our hands of a burden when we're dealing with the Well, if you don't know what happened to them, they don't answer the phone once they've been placed with a sponsor, how would you characterize the complete neglect of the welfare of that child uh, after they don't answer, the sponsor doesn't answer the phone, 30 days after they've been placed with, uh, the children have been placed with the sponsor? Uh, Senator, How would you characterize that? Senator, I have, I have confidence uh, in the dedication of the men and women of the Department of Health and Human Services to act in the best interest of those uh, children, and I defer your question to those dedicated men and women. That is so not it's, I'm not, I'm not asking about them. I'm asking about the policies and procedures of the Biden administration. Uh, apparently, no one in the Biden administration cares about those roughly 10,000 children uh, that don't respond, their sponsors don't respond to follow-up telephone calls. So, frankly, we don't know what happened to them, good, bad, or indifferent. Senator, let me ask you about let me ask you about another topic. In um, recently, you issued new enforcement guidelines, September the thirtieth, uh, two thousand twenty-one. And um, are you familiar with the notion of push factors and pull factors? I'm confident you are. Yes, I am, Senator. So push factors are violence, poverty, desire for a better life things we all as human beings understand. Pull factors are incentives uh, for people to make the dangerous journey uh, to the United States uh, by in the tender mercies of the drug cartels and the criminal organizations. Do you agree? Maybe not entirely with my characterization, but that's, uh, those are pull factors? Uh, I understand your point, uh, Senator. Yeah. Well, do you agree with uh, Police Chief Magnus who is the Biden administration's nominee for um, Customs and Border Protection, that a non-enforcement policy by the Department of Homeland Security when it comes to illegal immigration is a pull factor, encouraging more people to make that dangerous trip? That would require me to speculate because we don't have a non-enforcement policy. I'm just asking you whether you agree with Chief Magnus, the CBP nominee, whether a policy of non-enforcement would be a pull factor. It could be.
when you uh, issued these non-enforcement guidelines, oh, they're, they are not you said you said this. You said the fact that an individual is a removable non-citizen is not alone to be a basis for an enforcement action against them. Is that what you said? Yes, it is. You don't interpret that to be a statement to the uh, criminal organizations that smuggle people illegally into the United States or to the migrants themselves, that if you don't commit any other crimes other than illegally entering the United States, you are basically going to successfully navigate uh, our immigration system and end up being able to stay permanently in the United States? Absolutely not. That's 100 percent false, and I'll tell you why. If I'm 100 percent false. Yes, and the reason is um, one reason, if I may, uh, Senator, uh, is because recent border crossers are a priority for enforcement action. And so there is, in fact, no incentive to bring somebody here because that now, because that individual will be a priority for apprehension and removal from the United States unless they have a basis under United States law to remain here. Well, we know. We know, basically, uh, based on Border Patrol projections, that uh, this figure, 1.7 million, doesn't include 385,000 or so people who simply evade detection by Border Patrol. We know that um, there are about 350,000 people who are subject to a notice to appear in court or a notice to report. By my count, that's 735,000 people who have successfully made their way into the United States. And what you're telling us is that unless they commit some other offense other than illegal entry in the United States, it's uh, no concern of yours. No, that is, that is inaccurate, Senator, if I may. Uh, those individuals who are, have received notices to appear are recent border crossers and are priorities for enforcement and removal from the United States. They will be removed unless they make a claim to an immigration judge that they have a basis under United States law to remain here, and the judge rules accordingly. If the judge denies their claim, they will be removed from the United States under the guidelines that I issued on September 30th of this year. Thank you, Senator Cornyn. Senator Klobuchar. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome, Secretary. Uh, in the nine months since your confirmation um, as Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, you faced a series of unprecedented challenges, uh, from addressing the threat of domestic terrorism and cybercrime uh, to major domestic challenges, to challenges on our border during a global pandemic, to welcoming thousands of Afghan refugees and helping them find a home. I don't think anyone here uh, uh, believes that this is an easy portfolio. I remember President Obama saying that when he first got into office and was asked about a series of challenges that he confronted. Um, so I want to thank you for your willingness to serve and the men and women of your department for the work that they do. I want to actually start with a positive topic, um, and that is uh, the work that um, you and your crew have done in opening the land and uh, the land and air entry uh, across our northern border um, for vaccinated visitors, an issue I've long been working on as head of the U.S.-Canadian Interparliamentarian Group in the Senate. I can tell you there were a lot of people um, celebrating in my state when we finally opened the border, not just for air, uh, given that the Canadians were already open and you could fly from um, Montreal to Miami, but you couldn't drive from Thunder Bay to Duluth. So we're very pleased about this development. Um, could you talk about what implementation challenges the department has had since opening the border last week? I have not heard a lot about lines or the like, but and I thank you uh, for that. Uh, but could you tell me how that has gone across the border? I'm only aware of my own state. Thank you, Senator. Uh, we're very pleased. Uh, with the way it has gone. Uh, we uh, communicated in advance uh, of July 8th, the date on which we lifted the Title 19 restrictions at our land ports of entry, that people should be uh, ready for uh, uh, increased wait times, 
uh, which is natural when an operational change like this occurs, especially at uh, ports of entry that are not uh, modernized. Uh, but fortunately, with uh, yesterday's uh, historic infrastructure bill, we're going to really change that uh, thanks to President Biden's uh, leadership. But we have not actually experienced the long lines that we would have expected. Okay. We really prepared for it, but they may come and we're continuing to communicate with the public. I appreciate that.